Me, 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 this is a slightly odd for me, and I'll tell you why. Because I have literally known you 20 years. 22? 21. Did you know that? 19. Oh, I thought you knew me when I was like a fetus. That works. No, I don't know you that long. <laughs> I have known Maddie that long. Yes, yes. Christy babysitted her and you. Oh, yeah. Yes, but I've not known you that long. Almost that oh, okay. long. So, I'm sorry to do this whole little thing. I probably should introduce you. Katie, why are you here today? You are a what? I am a costume designer. A costume designer? Yeah, for the theater. Only the theater so far. <laughs> Only the theater. So, Chad? Which theater? Cinemark? <laughs> Regal? Uh, the questions. performing, the, the, live, the live kind. What's that? Do people still go to those? <laughs> uh, yes, old people. Old people with money. Old people with money. Old white people. I with was money. about to say old white people go to them. They're <laughs> mm -hmm. the same ones who support your favorite president. Oh. I'm being sarcastic. That's oh. the one with the funny glasses, right? <laughs> what? The theater. They have those funny glasses. Yeah, yeah, they <laughs> offer glasses so yeah. they can look. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. See, cultured. I don't think you're that cultured. Anyway, Burp. I just needed people to know, well, why did we Bonehead decide to do this? Well, for two reasons. One, I'm very proud of you. I was telling you this beforehand. You're out living your dream. It's cool to see you grow up and be the absolute antithesis of your father. <laughs> uh, the devourer of worlds. Uh, ki kicker of kittens. Kicker of kittens. <laughs> and uh, the Republican of Republicans. Yeah. To see, the ant to see this man... Raise Trump's sweaty taint. <laughs> 180 degrees difference than what he he is. Just makes me smile and giggle a little bit. Now, he's going to remind me that I have a two-year-old and this is going to happen to me. <laughs> My kid's going to come out and kick the truck and say, if I are a conservative and or some bitch run. Not necessarily. It's true, but probably. I think <laughs> your children pretty much want to be the opposite of you. <laughs> nah. So... You got into this. How did you get into this? I see your lovely jean Disney oh, jacket. Yes, thank you. How did I get into theater or how did I get into Disney? I don't necessarily. I know <laughs> we're going to talk. Ticket. Pay, pay for the ticket. ticket. I know. Well, I know Bro. I got into Disney. Mm -hmm. That would be I my grandparents. I watched that. Okay. Uh -huh. So I understand that. Plus you went to Disney a whole lot. But that's not mm -hmm. what I want to talk about as much as I want to know how you got into theater. Because to my Understanding, you weren't in theater before you all. got at college. So, Not what were you going to be in? What, what did you start out as? So, uh, when I was about six or seven, I thought I wanted to be a pediatrician. Your dad told me that mm -hmm. once, and I said, "You know, pediatricians make the least amount of any doctor." And he actually got pissed at me. But still, um, a lot more story. than anybody in theater or, or film. But, oh, you know. I know, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> but no, I, you know, I thought I wanted to do that for years, and I struggled um, for uh, over a decade with science and math classes. So I would. You weren't um, any good at it. I wasn't any good at it. So I would um, ignore, or rather, brush aside whatever science and math crap I had to do and I would go watch movies and I would watch uh, come on in James and have a seat Hello. Uh, anyway so you were saying you were ignoring the fact that you were oh yeah I was ignoring the fact that I was awful and hated math and science and I would go watch TV film occasionally I would get a chance to go to the theater there's still not a whole lot of options for that in Kentucky but um, I went to college and my parents were like all right you need to make a decision you need to figure out what you want to do not thinking I would choose theater, they suggested, you know, why don't you get in um, in the intro to theater class, see if you like it, you know, literally... Who suggested you take an intro to theater class? My dad. This is his fault. It was always his fault. He likes to blame Denise Watkins, um, but the reality is he is the one who got me in the class, so it is his fault. So why did he get you into the class? What, what was his thinking? It, it was a last resort. <laughs> 
<laughs> he couldn't get you into something else. The man's an academic advisor. I, I, I know what he does for a living. I didn't want to do anything else. There was nothing else that interests me. At, at least with theater, it was something that was somewhat relevant to my interests. So, so I did it, and I I took the theme, it. the same intro to theater class, and it scarred me for life. Really? Yes. <laughs> Why did at it At the scar same you? school. Because <laughs> I am a severe introvert. <laughs> And get and them forcing me to get on stage and do a play. Oh, Ugh. oh, they forced you. They didn't force me to get on stage for the intro class. That was I, they did me. Oh, that was a group project I had to do. I had to go up oh, there I'm sorry. and recreate because my little group decided they wanted to do the uh, the opening of Friends. What do, 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 okay. Are you serious? <laughs> yes, you I'm play? not. I, and then I ended up. I don't know how to dance. I did the bat toot dude. <laughs> Well, of course play? he played Rachel. <laughs> yes. I, know, I was assuming. I was Rachel. He's yeah. not a Phoebe. They didn't make me get on stage until I was like a major. Oh, until I was no. a proper major. <laughs> they made me get on stage in my intro to theater class. I and even the... then they didn't make me do like actual theater stuff. I did like Doctor Who monologues. Yeah, no, I was like, I, said, I, I would not refuse to move. The, the, I could not force my legs and body to move. So I sit there and did the wow. bad toot C for five minutes. <laughs> Back to you. <laughs> Why? I'm important. <laughs> Well, let's, let's not. I mean, I'm sure you're... Mom... Yeah, you're important. Thank you, Tony Robbins. <laughs> you're important. Somebody you're good out enough. There. You're smart, smart enough, enough. And I'm sure somebody... And I, you can eventually make middle management. <laughs> lower middle, middle management. Lower yeah. middle management. We can find you a solid four-figure salary <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> In the fast-paced world of adult literature. literature. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we're getting off topic. Uh, anyway, so you were in this theater class and you made Chad cry. Then what? Mm, um, and then I just kept going with it. I kept doing, um, I kept doing shows. I ran wardrobe. I stitched. Um, the second year, I got to design. Did you ever sew beforehand? No, my grandmother tried to teach me and I refused <laughs> when I was about eight years old. I can see that. I'm still not. <laughs> great at stitching i'm an okay stitcher i can get by i've done stitching jobs, i got some buttons but i prefer the show's done <laughs> i can do buttons buttons are easy it's like actually cutting draping drafting stuff like that that i'm still working on but design is more of my area anyway so when you mean design what's the difference between so actually designing the outfits actually mm -hmm. drawing the outfits exactly all right okay okay mm -hmm. so go from there what was the show that you were hooked and you just knew when when did you know if you say um, cats, so help me God. Oh, oh it was not cats. Okay. Um, no I was worries. working on the last show of my first semester called Dangerous Liaisons. Is it? <laughs> Bastard. So you were stitching on a show. I'm mm. sorry, go back. Yeah, His I was... His name was Randy. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's terrible. Cause I you're you were stitching mind. on Randy? It never uh, you dirty dog. Let's tell <laughs> oh, some God. stories and make your dad just cringe later. Oh, no, no thanks. <laughs> Too soon. Too soon? He never did anything bad in his life. Who? Randy? Never. Yeah, let's not. Moving on. Am I missing something? I don't know. Keep going. Uh, yeah, I was running wardrobe on Dangerous Liaisons. It was fall the 2012. Movie. Yeah, the movie's John amazing. John Malkovich. The movie's amazing, um, but we did it at MSU, and that's kind of when I decided that this is, this is the path I want to take. Okay. Cool. So what's the fate best show that you've worked? I'm going through this because I know we're eventually going to get through the history of, and I want you to the explain. The best the, what's or your... my favorite? Oh. <laughs> um, so, well, the best shows I worked on were probably the shows at the Santa Fe Opera. The, they put on amazing, uh, some of the highest quality shows in the U.S. Uh -huh. um, my favorite show that I've ever worked on, and my dad hates it, but my favorite show I've ever worked on was a musical called Star Mites. And it was this late 80s sort of comic book inspired like uh james's son just hit the floor keep going <laughs> yeah. uh it, it was it's corny and it's cheesy but all the songs are catchy it's fun star mites sing us a star song it dealt with the oh. space rash <laughs> <laughs> oh space <no>. herpes <laughs> Um, That's a movie. I don't, don't even worry think about. I can remember the songs, <laughs> but I loved working on it. So is, this isn't an original. Was this at Santa Fe or at Moorhead or where? This was at Porthouse Theater up in Kent, Ohio. Oh, okay. I think it was nominated for a Tony when it first um, was on Broadway, but um, still very, very. God cheesy. bless you, Tony Randall. <laughs> Sorry, I thought it was Tony no, Robbins. You, you, you... <laughs> 
you were saying Star Mites is your favorite. Star Mites is my favorite that I've worked on. Okay, Star Mites. I need to look that up later. Oh, yeah, please do. So, as we were going through, I was asking you earlier, so what are you mm -hmm. going to do? You've got one more year of grad school, right? Mm -hmm. and i got one more year at UNLV. Yeah? And then what? And then I'm going to go out to L.A., and I'm going to I'm gonna try to do the film and television thing, try to get in and be a costumer and work my way up to design. Good. Great. Now, here's what we want to talk about. Mm -hmm. You and I have talked about this back and forth. No, Chad, just go ahead and play on your phone. Uh, I'm assuming this this is not, there's a there's a line of cheesy Japanese toys called Star Might, and I'm assuming that is not your play that you no. work on. Okay. No. Well, but let's buy the Japanese let's toys. Let's buy them and let's the reenact the play. Cool, actually. Yeah. Let's buy them and reenact the play with the toys. Stop Here, us. and yeah, we'll use mice. <laughs> that would be Star Mites. Yeah. So describe to our listeners, Joe. <laughs> if you're listening right now, it's 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 uh, lovely descriptions. <laughs> they're got some of them have got green pants or green hair and whatnot. Uh, they're very. They look like they walked off the set of <laughs> Train Spotting. <laughs> Are they Bowie esque? Bowie esque. A uh, very. Mm. Um, Trying to think of the word that I can say yeah. without offending somebody. So, so in our defense, um, the design at Port House was better than what we're looking at yeah, right yeah. now. Um, but it, it's kind of it's a story of this girl who doesn't feel like she fits in in, in her world, and um, she loves comic books. So eventually, she ends up falling into the comic book and being the superhero in the comic book. Oh, okay. Yeah, and in the comic book, she has. The, the lead character is like her twin, and it's very cheesy and corny, but really fun. No, uh, no, yeah. it sounds great. I'd like to, yeah. love to see it. So, <clears throat> I wanted to go a little bit through history, a film mm -hmm. we talked about, some of your favorite ones. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you all have some favorite costume dramas. This is one of those bonehead things I that do. we really need you because we're not very good at this. There's a reason why we haven't done this topic <laughs> mm -hmm. and musicals. So we're going to talk okay. about the cost, the lovely costume design in the historical movie Super Mario Brothers, right? <laughs> yes. Because now, the costume design... Because if you're talking about the film, but I think we need to go back even further and do the Captain Lou Albano. Well, um, oh, man. Shake so you got to remember, on this, on this episode, we've had... That. William Malone, we've had directors, we've had artists, mm -hmm. as I was saying er earlier... We have had production managers, we have production designers. You're our first costume designer. Mm -hmm. And we can talk about wow. how realistic the costume designers were in the movie Garbage Pill Kids. Because that's all about fashion. Oh. Actually, the studied? subplot is about... So, the Garbage Pill Kids? The no. movie. No movie. Uh, it's a shit show. Yeah, it's a shit show. <laughs> but the whole subplot is fashion design. It really oh, okay. is. And they're very good at it. They're very good at it. Why? That's the subplot. I have no, <laughs> no idea. idea. They gave somebody $50,000 to write that script. They did cocaine for a week, and then the last <laughs> night they had shit up their nose they to keep paid, it from bleeding. They to paid figure that it out. person more than, like, a school teacher, more than a person that works, like, You a know, if they're SAG, I'm sure they did. Oh, yeah. Or SAG or screenwriters. And there's people do. that have made a career writing screenplays that have never seen the screen. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I know that. Yeah, right. You don't necessarily have to have movies out there to not have made a living at them. That's true. So what are some of your favorites? Let's go through the history. What, what inspired you? What did you learn through school? Oh, what are some of the things? So let's go. Um, well, some of my, my f absolute favorite movies, just in general, are Singing in the Rain, which is, of course, a period piece in the 50s, about the 20s. Yes. Um, yes, I've heard of it. <laughs> I'm joking. I know, I'm, I know it. I'm glad. I'm glad. Um, it's a Manelli, right? <laughs> Did Vincent Minnelli direct Singing in the Rain? No idea. Who directed Singing in the Rain? I can't remember. I because th Gene Kelly. Didn't yes, Gene I Kelly? know who Gene Kelly is, and I know he probably did his own. He did own, all the chore he choreography. He did all of his choreography, but actually directed Was he also the movie as Vincent Minnelli. No, oh. almost positive. That's possible. I. Liza Minnelli is his daughter. I know. He did it with Judy Garland. Oh yeah. And then they had a child, which became Liza Minnelli. The directors. Uh, oh, Stanley, Stanley Donnan. Oh. I just totally screwed up. He I'm just so died. sorry. He just oh, died a couple months Gene ago. Gene Kelly also gets a directing credit. Oh, mm -hmm. good job. All right. So, Singing in the Rain. Why Singing in Punch the Rain? Punch yourself. Um, it's just a delightful musical. It's so fun. It's so sweet. It's 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 odd. Because Danny Kaye walks up a wall. Yeah. 
Danny K, Donald O'Connor. That's what I said, Donald O'Connor. <laughs> I you, am you in the no this Have you seen this movie? <laughs> I have, and I have fucked everything up that we were just talking about. <laughs> Sorry. That's also one of my all-time favorite musicals. It's up there with um, Hairspray. Uh, Which version? Of Mites. <laughs> oh, God. There's only one musical. There's I only know. one musical. I know, I know, I know. I like both versions of Hairspray. I like the 80s and the 2007 version. Okay. Mm -hmm. You don't? What? You don't like 07? No, I don't like the 07 version. It's it's very different. It's more based in the musical than it is Uh, the original movie. That's my son, Ronnie. Yes. (laughs) Sorry. So, why don't you like Hairspray? Uh, No, I like the John Waters Hairspray. No, I know. I don't like the 2007 version. I just found it... Is it because of John Travolta? No, it's not John Travolta. Just, it's John Travolta. Was he un- it's unnerving? Chris, it's that hack actor, Christopher Walken. Oh, Say God. one more bad word by Christopher Walken. I'll just, go Christopher Walken on you. Just phones it in. <laughs> every every performance. He's a wonderful dancer. You ever see Pennies from Heaven? Seriously, Pennies from Heaven? No. The musical he did in the 80s, um, Steve Martin? Yeah, I, Christopher I, I, Walken was in a music video where he just mm-hmm. danced yes. for fun. Yes, uh, uh, Weapon of Choice. Boy, Fat Boy Slim. Mm-hmm. Weapon of Choice by Fat Boy Slim, yes. Yep. Um, I was amazed. Christopher Walken no. actually started out as a dancer. Oh. Yeah, like you watch Pennies from Heaven. And a lion tamer. Uh, Pennies from Heaven, the musical he did with Steve Martin I'm in so the sorry, early Katie. 80s. It's fine. <laughs> no, you may actually, if you've never seen Pennies from Heaven, you should check it out. It was a human <laughs> bomb, by the way. Uh, it was, it's but bomb. the costume design on no it was No one else ever saw it except James. Mm-hmm. James has paid um, the residuals for all those folks. <laughs> Christopher Walken, yeah. <laughs> That's what Christopher Walken needs my dime from pennies from heaven. But uh, Christopher Walken uh, has an entire scene where he dances on a bar. Tap dances. Mm. Oh, hmm. wow. So, yes, so, there you go. So, there you go. I'll check that. So, no, so I just, no but, but, but real quick, just I just thought mm-hmm. the 2007 version of Hairspray was a pale imitation of the 1980s version. That's the only reason. Okay. John Waters still cashed all those checks. Oh, oh I know we did, and God sure. bless him. Yeah. Actually, in his book, he talks about how he was trying to get another movie made because the hairspray was dwindling down and the money was starting yeah. up. <laughs> and then they did the live version and then he made more money. I'm sure that's, yeah. yes, that's mm-hmm. probably true. All right, so Singing in the Rain, what's Singing next? Singing in the Rain, um, When Harry Met Sally. Okay. I love that movie. But I never think, you're right, you're, you're just talking about your favorite movies because I was like, I never think mm-hmm. of When Harry Met Sally for costumes. No, you don't, but it's a wonderful, it's, you know, you see the evolution of a relationship and you see how it's their It's written by Nora Ephron, too. directed yeah. by Robert Reiner. Mm-hmm. See, I got that one right, because that's, yeah. that's one of my favorite, mm-hmm. that's actually one of my favorite romantic comedies, Romantics. too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and I like I like seeing how they how they evolve as people and how their how their wardrobe changes through the decades. I think oh, we have what, uh, you know uh, other than the one they would go from the sixties, seventies, and eighties. Is there something mm-hmm. else I'm missing, or is it just as they grow as adults? Just just as they grow into into their own people. I mean, when they start out, you know, I, I'm starting to get into that phase of my life where you know you start out, you're fresh out of college, you're moving somewhere new exactly what I did. You know, you see the evolution of them as people and their wardrobes change with that. Um, now, I like it more so for the content than the costumes. I mean, I love, of course, the period pieces. They're beautiful. But um, that's just a movie that is overall just wonderful in terms of writing, design, acting, all of the above. What else? And the birdcage. I can see that. Yeah, the bird I love cage. the birdcage. Yeah. I love the contrast and how they both try to conform to what the two families think that they each need, both in terms of style and personality. Because, um, you know, you have the upper class, you know, wealthy, um, coming from money, East Coast family, senator, you know, and then you have Robin Williams and Nathan Lane, Drag Club, Miami, two very different, may as well be two different planets. It's its really interesting to watch the the design contrast of those. Have you ever seen the original French version? Is it Le Ca- I can't okay. say. Okay, uh, La Cage La Cage yeah, La Cage Falls. Falls. Yeah, I have not. It I is on either. my list. I have not either. I know so they, they made, made a sequel to it. They made a sequel? They made a sequel? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I'll have to watch yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's what it's called. <laughs> No, but but we know what we really know what it's called in French. Lay birdcage. <laughs> the birdcage. You're welcome. 
You can't speak French, can you? You know what the, what El Nino And you can lay the bite me. <laughs> lay, you know, lay bite me. I screwed English that up. English. You know what El Nino means, him. right? It means the, the Nino. Nino. See? Never studied. <laughs> Stop stealing my lies <laughs> that I stole from Ghostbusters, you prick. <laughs> prick. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So those are your three favorite movies? Those are my three favorite movies. There's some that have come out more recently that I really like, but it's not had a chance what to grow four? on me. When Harry Met Sally. Sing in the rain. rain. When Harry Met Sally. And the Birdcage. 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 Mm-hmm. Sorry, I thought there was a No, Joe cool. brought up Hairspray. hairspray I'm she, sorry. Said brought she, up hairspray. she said she enjoyed Hairspray. Oh, okay, so favorite. That's my favorite. Keep up. That's my favorite. For you musical. people listening, I'm flipping off James. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just knew there were four things You see mentioned. this? Four things mentioned. It's like four fingers now if you go really fast. <laughs> no, it's still just one. That's but it optic. looks like four fingers. It's an no, optical you illusion. You don't move that fast. Yeah, I do. No. <laughs> no, For people off. listening, they can't hear, but they can see. Now it's the opposite. Anyway, you were saying... Uh, there are some newer movies that I really enjoy, but they haven't had a chance to grow on me like like those three. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like what? Um, I really like uh, Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day. It's based on a book um, set in 1939 London. Uh, Frances McDormand, uh, Amy Adams, Lee Pace, great cast, beautiful costumes, beautiful sets. Um, it was amazing what they were able to find in London to, to film that. Um and, and how they built up those characters through costumes. Okay. What else? Um, I haven't seen it. Oh, my God. I This two-year-old has killed me. Oh. Have you seen it? Yes. I have seen it. I liked it. Mm-hmm. I don't remember anything about it, though. So, <laughs> it's all right. That's yeah. fair. Yeah, yeah. It's, went, it's a went set through out one eyeball and out the other. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I'm trying to think what else I've, I've watched recently. <laughs> So many fingers, James. Your finger, why is your finger so wet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> Dang, every joke I come out with is not what I'm intending it to be. No, no but that was much better than what you intended. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, Chad, you see, you go to a bar. Anyway, you were saying. And she goes, oh my God, the fat one. <laughs> you were saying. Um, I'm trying to think of more. Uh, I like the movie Atonement. Okay. Came out in 07. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it came out the same year as Miss Pettigrew Lifts Her Day. It was a good That's year. That's Keira Knightley, right? Keira Knightley, yes. James McAvoy. Um, I can't remember anybody else. Uh, oh, Saoirse Ronan, who had just played Mary Queen of Scots. Mm-hmm. She did an amazing job with that. Yeah, I like Saoirse Ronan. Um, I, she's in a movie I absolutely love. Hannah. Oh, Hannah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nailed it. Mm-hmm. You never studied. Too. <laughs> She's not in Last Exit to Brooklyn, but she's in that Brooklyn movie, The Love Story. What's it called? Uh, it was nominated for an Oscar. I watched it. It was okay. It went through one eyeball and out the other. <laughs> like again, you and Miss Pettigrew. Not how eyes work. That's not how eyes work. James? <laughs> Still just one finger, Joe. What two that time? Multiple. Oh, you can't even count. No, you, anyway. you put up both mm-hmm. hands. Well, both hands have both fingers. All right, so... I'm curious, when you're studying, is it mainly for theater or is it also film and television? Um, my grad program is pretty flexible, so if we tell our professor that we want to study more film, more television, we can focus more on that. Uh, the first year, because I, because I originally thought I was going to go to New York and try to do the whole Broadway thing. Um, what changed it was, your mind? Uh, going to New York. <laughs> Really? Yeah, uh, I was there. I was there about twenty minutes, and I was I was on the subway, and I did not enjoy it. <laughs> I I I just knew that it it wasn't going to be for me. I can handle the traffic in L.A. I can handle um, um, the expensive apartments, expensive houses. Sorry. That's okay. Stop. Um, you want me to answer it? No, it's a telemarketer. <laughs> Do you want me to answer it? I was hoping it was your dad so yeah. I could scream out, turn off the light and come back to bed. <laughs> oh. Sorry, anyway, keep going. Uh, what was I even saying? The, uh, I meant it for your father. The, uh, <laughs> the subways on New York. Oh, yes, yes, fresh. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I kind of I kinda realized... It's a new sponsor. <laughs> pretty quickly that it, it wasn't really Why what I James wanted. James going to make out with Chad. Just the new cherish. On several <laughs> levels. <laughs> ah! It's childish, Joe. It's childish. Childish. 
Keep going. Oh my god. We're going to prison. So, <laughs> I'm not, Jared. <laughs> um, I just, you know, I knew there were more opportunities out in California for me. Um, Would well, you? So what? What made you think that I don't want to do theater? I want to do te- TV and film. It, it's not that I don't want to do theater. It's that um, there are so many more. There's just so many more opportunities in film and television. There's many more opportunities. You can cover more um, more topics. You know, with theater, you end up doing a lot of the same stuff because things go in cycles. Like just this year, I <laughs> interviewed. <kid>. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I interviewed with a couple theaters that were all doing the same shows. Uh-huh. Like last year, Mamma Mia was big. Um, this year, uh, I, th- this year and last year, I know at least two or three theaters that are doing, uh, Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat. You know, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of repetitive. Um, but you know, in, in LA, I can do film, I can do television, I could do theater. No, there, it's there not like there isn't theater. theaters there. Yeah. Um, and I also, I love animation and uh-huh. that's something that I would like to be a part of in some way sometime in the future. Don't really know when I'm, I'm starting to get to know people, but you know, I, those are opportunities that I would just not have in New York. I'm sorry, James. Is oh, well, I actually, uh, shut up, James. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. <laughs> no one cares, man. Speaking of, of the, the difference himself. between the theater and film, mm-hmm. or car television. ran real good, James. Car, car ran good. Car ran no. um, James is talking with his. What hands. is the difference between? I would imagine when you're doing staging, one's on your TV box and the other one's in a big screen. From the costuming point of view, is smaller I mean, people got to get them to fit in the TV box. <laughs> What is it? <laughs> it sounded like my kid was laughing at that. I just want to point that out. I, I was trying to do a somewhat academic question. I'm sorry, Chip. No, but I mean, mm-hmm. I would think with the stage, you have to do things in a certain way. Because I've heard oh, stage yeah. actors talk about, you know, when you're acting on stage, you have to be loud. Well, where obviously, if you're in. mic'd, you can you can do those more quiet voices. Things like. Mm-hmm. What is the difference when you're the, doing? Is this a nonverbal for mic? Yes, yeah, as he mic'd. tugs on his shirt. Um, <laughs> What's the difference when you approach that on stage? Like, if you're thinking about... Because that's actually something I was curious about. Seeing uh, the way... Seeing some props from, like, Pygmalion mm-hmm. versus My Fair Lady. Is this a question? I was or, just wondering uh, how, how you approach that and what's the difference that you've seen. Uh, we're flying over uh, the Great Canyon. Uh, <laughs> let me look out to your right. Uh, Pygmalion. Hey, hey, can you uh, remind him who directed that movie that he got everything wrong about? Stanley, <laughs> Stanley Kubrick. <laughs> Not everything was directed by Stanley Kubrick. Yes, it was! Alfred Hitchcock directed some of that. The moon landing! <laughs> Keep going. So, um, yeah. Well, I mean, when it comes to theater, um, you know, you, you have... With both film and television and theater, you all have... Um, limited amount of time to get a lot of stuff done with with theater and film you have to be very detail oriented because your audience is going to be much closer to your product Mm -hmm. you know you're making something that somebody's going to look at up close so you can't sew something you can't sew any basically any part of it wrong you can't let a stitch be seen especially on period shows i remember reading and watching some stuff about downton abbey okay in the 20s um they had somebody on call that did beating something like 20 or 30 hours a week that just did the beating. That is something that you could Keep kind them of... in line. You could, maybe, you could use an applique beating, or... Beating, <laughs> not beating. Beating. Uh, that's something... Hey, you this could, is where you say, what's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> and it called them the same. <laughs> You're that, saying? They made them watch Deliverance on loop. Oh, God. <laughs> Ned beat. Everybody. You were said beating... Beating, beating, uh, yeah, um, you know, Quit being you could, so violent. <laughs> that's something that you could, um, you could substitute or give, uh, you could use an alternative option that would be cheaper, that would be, um, um, a little more time efficient. You could use an applique, you could use a variety of different, uh, options to do something like that. Uh, whereas with film and television, you kind of have to do it to the book, to, to the period, um, or else your audience is going to notice and they're not going to like it. Especially Downton Abbey people. Yeah, well, because they have somebody who's an historian who's on set mm-hmm. saying this is correct oh, yeah. and this isn't. I've watched the document. I, 
literally have actually not ever watched an episode of Downton Abbey, but I watched a documentary about the guy. Mm-hmm. Have you? Do you know what I'm talking about? Who is the the period guy who stayed on set the whole time for the shooting oh. of the whole? My daughter's excited think... about the pending movie. By the way, oh, I am too. She, it looks she good. Was like, oh, we have to go see that, and I'm like, well, okay. But but so he would say, no, this is accurate. No, this is inaccurate. No, this is accurate. No, this is yeah. inaccurate. And he would be there all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a lot more that I don't want to say that you can fudge, but that you can um, you you have more options when it comes to theater because your audience is going to be so far away that that um, any like small detail errors they're not going to see. Um, now with that, things on stage are much more exaggerated than they are right. in real life or on film or television. I remember I saw Phantom of the Opera, which has been touring for decades now longer than i've been alive um and i could see details on the costumes even though i was like in the nosebleeds because it was too expensive to get Mm -hmm. down on the floor um and that's really really important especially on big shows like that big broadway shows um where you're going to have audiences that could be you know so far back that they're not even going to be able to make out the face of the actor but they still need to see details of the costume i understand Mm -hmm. okay you were talking about shows like, so Mamma Mia is going on in 14 different places you were saying mm-hmm. you were interviewing and certain shows. I, you said the other one was uh, Joseph and the America. Um, in the America. In the America. Mm-hmm. There's only three colors on the American jacket, red, <laughs> white, and blue. And they Boom. And Trump's Joseph and the Turtle <laughs> Coat. T- 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 Jesus. <laughs> oh, I can't talk. Never stop. I was it. curious. Do you think Mamma Mia is popular, so everybody's going to put up Mamma Mia simply because it br- puts asses in seats? Um, yes, sometimes. So theater probably, for a lot of these local shows, mm-hmm. are they overly adventuresome when it comes to what show they're going to put on? Oh, yeah. Pretty much everyone. <laughs> really? Um, well, and it depends on the community, and it depends on um, the community support. Then why are they all doing Mamma Mia? Um, Here we go again. (laughs) My, my. Because they know that people will enjoy it. It's recognizable. It's something that... It's a joke, Chad. Sometimes we sing on the show, you didn't join me for Mamma Mia. (laughs) Honestly, don't know any of the lines from Mamma Mia. I don't believe that. Take a chance. I really don't. Take a chance on him. Take a chance on me. (laughs) Take a chance, take a chance. It we also already... tends to coincide with the movie releases, like last year. Right, the, the Mama sequel Mia to Mamma Mia. Right, so yeah, it yeah. was more in the public eye, and more people wanted to see it. That's okay. what I mean. It seems mm-hmm. less adventuresome to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it it really varies. Like, of course, you get more opportunities to be more um, experimental. That's her father. Oh, is it? Not texting us. Nothing about this particular thing. Oh. Oh, what's he want? Tell him we have his daughter. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think we should do that. <laughs> uh, we have your daughter. <laughs> I'm going to take the time to take the and picture. The com- and the combination to the air shield. Yeah. I mean, we'll edit this out. We're not going to edit this out later, are we? No, yeah, no, I'm going to leave it in here. Sorry. When your good friend's daughter is an amazing costume designer and you get her on your show because she's doing you a favor because she's in town for 48 hours and <laughs> Total Diva couldn't had to do it at 6 instead of 8. Oh, uh, man. You you take that opportunity to do so, and then you take the opportunity to piss off your friend, said friend. Hey, so, we're, uh, as we were saying, what were we saying before we threatened your father? Sorry, <laughs> 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 do you remember what we're talking about? I know it was costume design. Mm-hmm. Well, so, we're talking about Mamma Mia. I, yeah, we're, we're talking, talking about, about yeah, the the. Uh, you know, what gets produced and what gets put on and how yeah. it's repetitive. Well, I'm mm-hmm. also curious, so what show would you really want to work on, theater-wise? Theater-wise? I have a couple that I really like. Um, there's one... That you haven't done yet. That I haven't done. Um, I personally... We're going to go back to it. I love Hairspray. I want to do that musical. Uh-huh. I just love it. It's so good. Um, and I want to do a, a play called Same Time Next Year. It's a, I believe, Marvin Hamlish play from the 1970s. Alan Alda and Mm -hmm. Ellen Burstyn did the movie. I think I've seen the movie, but I Mm -hmm. can't tell you the plot. It's, um, it's, it's kind of has a When Harry Met Sally-esque quality to it because it's just about this man and this woman and their relationship over the course of, like, four decades. Okay. Um, it starts in the 50s. Um, they meet, a randomly at this um at this little like bed and breakfast little inn yeah in like 
somewhere in Southern California and they end up having an affair together. And they say that they're going to meet up every year, same time, same place, same time next year. Um, no, it's cool. And it's, it's, it goes like every five years and it talks about what's going on in politics, what's going on in their lives, what's going on in the world around them, how they evolve throughout that process. Mm-hmm. It's really good. It's a very small cast, too. Yeah, it's, it's like literally... Yeah, I thought it was only like two or three. Well, and one and the, the third isn't even seen on screen. On the IMDb page, one of them's listed as pilot number two. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. They fleshed out the cast for the movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's my dinner with Andre. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I really like... that. That's something that I would really like to work on. One, because it's, it's rarely produced... Um, and it it's just it's a really interesting play about the twentieth century and about how relationships in the twentieth century evolved through the decades. That's cool. Now you want me to make now you're making me want to go back and watch the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, you should. It's good. I know I've Alan seen Alan Alda is amazing in it. I know I've seen actually Alan Alda is a good actor. Probably doesn't get enough credit. I know Fair you're yeah. a huge Mash fan. But oh yeah. Past that, there's some really great roles that he. I don't think he ever gets credit. Ch- uh, Chad's a big Mash fan as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so that and that. Uh, oddly enough, I was sitting here thinking about because we went, you, Chad, and I are all from the same alma mater. And when Chad and I were there, I actually thought the theater department was pretty good. You got to remember, I was there mm-hmm. when Steve Kazee was there. We oh, were both were there. yeah, really? Yeah. Oh, cool. Well, I was Steve's RA. I oh. rem- yeah. He turned me down. He tur- Do you remember? He turned us down for a short film. He was mm-hmm. actually, he was who we wanted for the third degree before we made it yep. to all female. Mm-hmm. Yep. And who was the other That's guy's cool. name? It was a really good actor, Sonny too. Sonny Liston? No, Sonny Landon. Sonny Landon. Sonny Liston was a boxer. Boxer, boxer. yes, that's yeah, right. Yeah, that was funny. There's no shit. This was actually could have happened, almost. It almost happened. I did a short film. We did a short film called The Third Degree, and it could have been Steve Kazee in the chair and Sonny Landon, who's the... Have you ever seen Predator? Yeah. Crazy Indian guy. Oh, okay. He ended up retiring to Ashland. Mm-hmm. Ran oh. for governor. We knew ran for go- yeah, yeah, yeah. We knew him. Had since oh. passed on. Yes. And he said, yes. Wow. Sonny. Rest in peace, son. He was bad shit crazy. Bad shit conservative crazy. I mean, on a oh. whole other level. But. Like yeah. like your father, Sonny Landon. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. Was in Predator. Your, yeah. dad, was, your dad is a Predator. Predator. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, well, that's Joe. not an image I needed. <laughs> no, probably not. But you should know the truth. <laughs> I would like to see Craig's mouth flutter out with the beard. Like this. <laughs> it's a hissing sound that would get you. <laughs> anyway, so I, so actually thinking back, I remember going to several great productions when I was at Moorhead. And what is it because my kids screamed? No, no, no. Uh, just uh, not all of them were winners. But no, Rhea Rashomon was like. Oh man, it was terrible. Yeah, it was bad. I mean, and no, out. I went to one uh, actually, and it was I can't. It wasn't Steve who was in it. It was the other Excuse guy. Me. I cannot think of his name. It's been so many years. He was a decent. He was a good actor. He was mm-hmm. the second best actor behind Steve. And it was Jake's Women. It was a Neil Simon play. I loved. I just oh. remember Rashomon was funny to me because they were actually trying really too hard to do the Asian face. Oh. And yeah. I'm like, okay, don't do that. Just don't do it. Don't don't was do it. Was it the nineties? This would have been early 2000s. Ooh, mm, that, yeah. I was going to say, see, in the 90s, <laughs> Moorhead... Uh, no, it would have been the late 90s, wouldn't it? It would have been the late 90s up to 2001. 99, 2000, yeah. yeah People 90. were still yeah. sensitive. <laughs> and they aren't anymore. Oh, well. <laughs> Life has changed and America's better. better. So you were saying. Yeah. Uh, oh, I can't. I have, I have to bring up another one. Um, God bless you, Mr. Rosewater. An yep. amazing musical by Howard Ashman. Um, a- Howard Ashman and Alan Menken, their first collaboration before they did Little Shop. Um, uh-huh. It's about... It's Little a, Shop of Horrors. Little Shop of Horrors. Um, For our show. people who may not know, mm-hmm. that actually was a musical before it was a movie. Well, actually, it was a movie Maybe. before it was a Roger musical. Corman Listen, don't, don't start to, just start talking to us about Man. Roger Corman. Joe is <laughs> on a roll no, today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's go um, ahead and put uh, Casey up to bat again. I can't so can understand why out. she's here mansplaining to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll explain to you Never. several reasons. She why studied. You're <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's fine. Um, uh, anyway. Yeah, no, it's based on the Kurt Vonnegut book. And Kurt Vonnegut actually saw the, Hack. if not the premiere, the um, one of the one of the shows, and it became Kurt Vonnegut's God Bless You, Mr. Rosewater, the uh-huh. musical. 
um, because he loved it so much. He wanted to put his name on it because it was one of the best representations of his work that he'd seen. Oh, really? Yeah. So um, that came out in 79. It did well at the WPA in New York, and then it went on to a larger space, and it kind of lost... Um, it's intimacy. It's a very sweet play um, set in a small town in Indiana. Uh-huh. So to put that in a big proscenium theater. You're in Indiana? No, Jack. No. Damn. <laughs> Terre Haute, shut the hell up. Terre Haute's not Rose small. Rosewater, Indiana. Fictitious. There's no such thing. Yeah, no. Mm-hmm. Rose water. What the hell? Mm-hmm. This water's made out of rose. roses. It's the uh, water that came off that sled, Citizen Kane wrote. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say it's tears from a rose. I thought you were going to say tears. Like tears in the rain. Rutger Hauer. Rest in peace. Never forget. Yeah. Sorry. The actor That's Rutger Hauer died this week who gave the Aww. Blade Runner speech. Of, he wrote it, oh. actually. And actually he also, he brought us a hobo with a shotgun. <laughs> anyway, you were saying. <laughs> anyway, it was a great play, but um, it never got any notoriety because um, it kind of flopped after the WPA run. So it kind of fell into um, obscurity until just a few years ago they did uh, a city center uh, show and they got a cast recording. So you can actually listen to that on iTunes or You have to wherever. email me or Facebook me that. I will. It's really, really interesting. I, I'd like to hear it. I really mm-hmm. would. It's pretty tongue-to-cheek and it, it's really That's where Jay distinctly keeps his. 70s, but it's, it's a wonderful play. I don't get that phrase. I was more <laughs> thinking of James keeping his tongue in your cheek. Mm. <laughs> are, we doing a, are, we, are we doing Dorito a Dorito flavored kisses are, from my James Are we doing a crash <laughs> test dummies cover yeah. mm. Mm. Anyway Once There was this key oh, go. What other musicals do you want to talk about Before we move on to Disney Is there anything oh, else man. you want to talk about I'm about to go watch Smile Another Howard Ashman musical mm-hmm. just before you I'm went familiar to with Smile Yeah um, it Which was, was also a movie we also made it, into it a movie. was a movie in 75 Yeah Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Um that Howard Ashman loved and turned it into music, uh, turned it into a musical, not turned it into music. Uh, I think Marvin Hamlish did the lyrics, or no, he did the you music. You know so much more about this than we do. Um, yeah. You just leave was... us in the dust. <laughs> it's not, and by the way, you yeah. should be impressed that you can, because most people don't. I, well, this is, so, I mean, this is stuff that I've I've researched and wanted to no, research yeah, it's for great. years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, given the choice, though, it sounds like with theater, you're much more interested in working on musicals than just hardcore drama, we'll say. Yeah, I am I like the hardcore drama. I don't think it's necessarily what we need as a society right now. No. I, I um, would agree with that. We need know, we need more Little Shop of Horror, which is one need, of the few musicals I can actually, I actually enjoy. Yeah, we need, a, we need some more positivity. And not even just positivity, just some liveliness. Um, and I think that's what we get with musicals. You know, I think I, I think it's very important to keep that element, to keep that um, keep musicals around. And I know some of them are overdone. Some of them, I, I get annoyed because, like I told you, they do the same musicals, you know, five times yeah, yeah, in one yeah, yeah, summer. Yeah. It gets kind of kind of hectic. But you know, it's what puts people in seats. Right. And it's it's probably I I like to call things like Mamma Mia like gateway musicals like if you like that's, that's what a good, that's a good way to put it I, yeah. I was about to say because that's that's one of the things that I Chicago's probably another my, one of those is yeah, a gateway yeah. musical my uh, my Hair. daughter is doing theater which what Hair? if you're you any. if you're any indication this means when my daughter goes to college she'll hate theater and then I'll have to figure <laughs> out something but she's she's nine and she's not Doing you know major theater. doing well. She's uh, got a job. Yet, right? yeah, no, no. <laughs> I keep waiting for Hollywood kid to start paying the bills, but I still got to go to work. Can um, I get that equity card soon? Yeah, yeah. The uh, but you know the, the Innovation Arts Academy <laughs> is where she uh, trains her and stuff. And they they did uh, once on this island. Oh, and I saw once on this island and hated it. it. Really? I yeah, went, I saw it here and like it's. Oh, I, went, I you know <laughs> I went awful. and and my wife got caught into doing the costume design with a very low budget. We'll just say, and my wife yeah. goes overboard. And, but anyway, um, I I went and saw my daughter obviously performing it and all of that stuff. And speaking of gateway musicals, I found mm-hmm. myself about two weeks ago. I don't even remember all the lyrics, but I was humming one of the songs, and then my daughter heard me and started belting it out in the Aww. back seat. And as mentioning gateway musicals, mm-hmm. I think that's one of the reasons. Like, I can see a play, a drama, if you mm-hmm. will, and I may remember a line or two, 
But I don't remember the lyrics, but I can remember the beat, and then my daughter knows all the words, obviously. So I, I think that's that's one of the interesting things about musicals that I do think is compelling, and, and I think you're right. Oh, yeah. I think we do need stuff like that because it does bring in a different type of audience. Mm-hmm. And people that necessarily wouldn't go to the theater, like, I mean, my family, we didn't. We we were not theater goers by any means, you know. We they my parents didn't grow up going to the theater, so when I what? was part of it, well. But we've heard all about the Keith Albee. All about it. That's all, about it. It's all he ever talks <laughs> about. How he wants to see this. By the way, what what's the name of the play you were telling the musical? The love one of this island. What's, what's on the island? On what's island? On, I keep every time I try to say it, it always comes out this island Earth, <laughs> Earth, which is an obscure science. It's not really all that obscure science yeah. fiction film. Which could be a musical that I prefer over Once on This Island. Well, Once on This Island, actually, I I, I was fascinated by it because my daughter is nine and it deals with all the you know you've got the goddess of death and the guy is fast. I was like, wow, my daughter's doing stuff that I don't know if I would have been ready for at nine. Yeah, no, I think I think that exposure is really important. Um, and and now that now that my parents are they have a child and in theater and film and television that have done all of these things that wants to be a part of all these things it's opened them up to more to, to more that they that they otherwise would not have wanted to see and i think that's the important like a lot of people balk at you know the mainstream musicals like cats and phantom and uh even the disney musicals because they're so um they're so popular that anybody can see them but that's the point anybody can connect with the characters through that music yeah you know i don't think there's anything wrong with the sort of uh the the popularity you know the the um the openness to to the to the audience like you know i i i don't see the point in isolating the arts into one category into one group of people that would understand it um you know I understand. Yeah. <laughs> I really do. I really do. I really do. Mm-hmm. So, let's transition a little bit. You have mm-hmm. another obsession. <laughs> Joe wants yes. to be called Josephina. I do not. <laughs> I want to be called Roderick. That's not... He's part of the People's Judean Front, not the Deep Front. <laughs> yes, Roderick <laughs> Usher, from this point on. Are you... <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> no. Uh, uh, anyway, you have another obsession. What is it? Disney. Why? Disney animation. Why Disney is there anima- animation? Animation. <laughs> animation. Uh, well, I, I mean, as you very well know, I've loved it since before I can remember. And all, all four of us actually share that in common. Mm-hmm. We all love Disney. Now, some of us on a little bit different scale, but what we all I love say? Disney. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So why? Um. They were my favorite gosh. animation when I was a child, though. I mean, that's. No, yeah. he's a total yeah. Don Bluth guy. Yep. Oh, okay. I and. I, I want to preface this with I don't You're I don't Chris dislike Miller, I don't yeah. dislike other other animation hater <laughs> <laughs> I don't dislike like I when I, I grew up I Screen not only with Disney I loved the Flintstones I loved Scooby Doo I loved the Jetsons oh um, I watched all the Nickelodeon we did a Hanna Barbera episode oh, she was yeah. telling us how much she's enjoyed our nineties cartoon one oh thank you oh yeah she's the one yeah I liked your Harry Potter ones too because it was hilarious because you don't like it. Neither do I. Yeah, two of us didn't. As for um, Haley quit, and uh, then we we wouldn't have done Harry Potter if if we hadn't have hit what it was is we'll do because fans request. I shouldn't say fans, but people who listen to us or actually watch us requested mm-hmm. it more than once. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we, Chad and I are poo pooed the idea until well we'll do it if you get up to a certain subscription. What what, what we should do and is by like, God they did it. <laughs> what we should so do, do a two is do a follow up on the about Harry, wizards that are not Harry Potter and Harry. <laughs> Potter and the Golden <laughs> Sneak Snatch, whatever it is. I believe. Well, I and believe. your love of Dobby. I hate Dobby. Well, Dobby Dobby's annoying. Dobby and Burning uh, Hell. I, I, I don't annoying. know if I have quite that hatred, but yeah. You I mean Burning Hell. He's right behind the Gungans. <laughs> Sorry. So the Gungans are first. Right. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, it's to... episode one. Jar Jar can burn in hell. <laughs> Who's the character, not the actor. I no, don't, no, no, no. That, hate that him. guy did a Lucas. job, and I think did it paid, as he wanted. Did it, did it as he was told to do yeah, it. Yeah, um, yeah, at yeah. best, that's, I salute that's you what, as an There's actor. a lot of people in different wars said the same thing. But yeah, 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 yeah. They did just doing their job. Dude, I'm gonna be honest with you right now. Let's be honest. Uh, Kathleen, I do it in a heartbeat. Kathleen Kennedy called you up and said, "Listen, we need a really heavy set gun gun for episode <laughs> nine. We're just gonna walk through the background and." 
and literally fall in your own feces. And that's going to be your role. You would be on set. And you have two lines. Misa. Misa dumb as hell. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that would be... You would be... Misa sling poo? <laughs> Sleep poo all day. <laughs> and by the way, the only thing that would be even better about that is when you got invited to conventions to sign. <laughs> Misa, sign your poo. <laughs> Bring poo to Misa. I ain't racist. Anyway, <laughs> I fill up so fast. <laughs> Chad, would you do it? Sure. Why are you not laughing? I don't know. <laughs> Everybody else is laughing but Chad. He's Chad, actually obviously upset. He's actually love upset of Jar Jar in episode no, one. No, no. He's actually upset that the poo line will come say, to yeah, pass. I was going to say, no, poo, to, poo, humor, poo humor is beneath me. No, it isn't. Really? <laughs> it's your favorite. <laughs> no, it's not. Poop. In silence. <laughs> So you were saying? I'm oh, more, why I, the Harry I have more one? sophisticated taste. Why the Harry Potter we, one? Yeah, it I was hilarious. We were, I thought we were awful. I thought those were two bad episodes. Yeah. Those were funny. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed them. <laughs> yeah, no, I enjoyed them. Um, but we're supposed to be talking about Disney animation. Yeah, I know. I'm just curious to talk about us. I love animation <laughs> so much. It's you know, it's an art form where anything is possible. Mm -hmm. Anything can happen. And what I think Disney has, um, uh, they they go above and beyond for the story. Mm -hmm. You know, I love other cartoons. I love other animation. But nobody nobody knows how to connect with their audience. More so than Disney animation, in my opinion. What's your favorite Disney animated film? Little Mermaid. Why The Little Mermaid? Um, it has always been up there, up top, um, but with the amount of research that I've been doing in the last couple of years, especially through college, watching uh, Don Hahn's documentary about Waking Sleeping Beauty. Uh -huh, yeah, which is really good. It is incredible. Yeah, incredible, through the 80s um, of Disney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's, he is a very nice man. Have you met him? Yeah, I just oh, met him cool. a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah? I have a print of some art that he did. Oh, yeah? It's amazing. I love him. And I, he's great. But um, Look at you, name dropping. Watch your toes, Chad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no. You know, we're talking about mixed drugs. <laughs> I did it earlier. I was like, she was like, I got a friend who does work of costumes on the on the Marvel films. I was like, oh yeah. Well, we had the makeup artist on the show. We got in a pissing contest before we all got here. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, uh, go ahead. No, it's fine. No, Otherwise, um, your friend will do the show. <laughs> we will totally have he or she. All right. I'll, I'll let She's him She's ignoring and rolling around. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Uh, no. I won't subject anybody to this. <laughs> don't blame her. Um... No, no, I uh, I love it. I've always loved the music. I love the story. Um, it's fun. It's one that you can sit down and watch pretty much any time. You know, there are other like I th the one of the best Disney movies is Beauty and the Beast, obviously. But that you say obviously like it's obvious. I think it is. I think it got nominated for an Oscar. So I'd, did Braveheart. Oh, I think won. It. and it won. Mm -hmm. I, no, no. Uh, of of what I consider, and I'm showing my age, but of what mm -hmm. I consider the new wave. I mean, Beauty and the Beast it is, is beautiful. probably my it favorite. Is yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's probably my favorite of the new wave. And as far as storytelling goes, it's it's spectacular. We need to we need to do we we eventually have we're going to do Disney movies. We you should probably come back home when we do that one. You want to do it at Christmas? Yeah, sure. Okay, because <laughs> I'll be home a month for Christmas. Mm -hmm. So I? I just know my three. Nobody's gonna. I'm the only one who likes. I'm kind of curious though. Your is your. What's your favorite Disney movie? I don't know that I know. My favorite Disney movie. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't take this long. No, to... it's hard because I don't. It, it depends on what you <laughs> sit next to Chad. Uh, what uh, what you want me to? Because my favorite one just to sit down and watch. Yeah. Is Lilo and Stitch. Oh, that's fair. Because yeah. of Ohana and, and my family means a lot to me and and feeling mm. like you're the outsider and. And maybe you are the maybe <laughs> small, maybe broken, but still good. I love yeah. that line. That's in my top um, one. Broken. That's in my yeah. top three. Um, I that one, and the, but as far as ones that I loved I as a kid, yeah. Um, Robin Hood and Sword in the Stone. Oh, that was really close. Yeah. I'm reading the Sword in the Stone book uh, right now. Sword in the Stone is my favorite. Uh, Disney Sword in the Stone is great. That's your favorite. That's my favorite. Sword it's, in the Stone. Uh, I mean, but you know, it's one of those things that really, and I, I'm I'm going to say something that will be terrible but you really can't go wrong with disney animation even some of the ones that are vaulted and mm -hmm. won't come out of the vault yeah i mean the songs songs of the snort <laughs> yeah yeah that one 
But if you look at that, the songs, the the animation style. And it's not that it's not present in the parks or present. It's totally present in the parks. Yeah. The songs are still present in the yeah, parks. It and it is released everywhere but one country. Did you know that? Oh, I didn't. Oh, we've talked about it before. I, I have a, a, It is available everywhere. I have a European but. copy. But the U.S.? Oh, yeah. Well, you see, uh, one time I was at a convention with one of my best friends, um, and my dad made me get one of those black market copies of Song uh -huh. of the South so he could watch it. Yeah. So it, I, I own That's it. That's what I, James Well, has. actually, I don't want yeah. to say that I own it. My dad owns it. That's fine. Joe James has one. <laughs> no, it's oh, yeah. them it's, all the and it's a, oh, it's really? a Basically, it's a dub it's of the European yeah. one. Yeah. Because yeah, there's a mine has the European sign, symbol mm -hmm. on it. Yeah. yeah. It's European. Yeah. Um the but yeah, you know, and I think about that and and yes, that movie definitely has not aged well. Mm -hmm. And it's an entire conversation that I had with the, the, not to get on a different topic, but I had this conversation in a social justice class of those stories, the Brer Rabbit, Brer Fox, those stories, the Brer stories came out of African Americans and were popularized by a white guy preserving them. Mm -hmm. Not unlike the Brothers Grimm uh -huh. capturing those stories. Now, how loaded a topic is that? Because I think it's pretty loaded that those stories arguably would have been lost in some ways or never would have been mainstream if this guy didn't do that. But at mm -hmm. the same time, he very much Europeanized those stories, which of course yeah. is what Disney ran off of. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's real. you get into this idea of preserving history and preserving all that stuff. Well, and it's preserving history in a way, in a very white way. That's, that's, well, and that's uh, all we of, still that's have Dumbo and the Crows. Oh. Not when it's Not released. on Disney Plus. Disney, Disney Plus, Plus is going to delete scenes. that scene. Yeah. Are they really? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you know, I think that gets to interesting points. I, that, that, see, I have a problem with that. I do too, because why erase it? Why not be aware? Revisionist like, history is dangerous. It exactly. is very dangerous. But so, I, I think going back to that and talking about another animation studio, mm -hmm. Warner Brothers, mm -hmm. when they released the Golden Collection, now the Platinum Collection, they're re-releasing them again. Mm -hmm. But they had Whoopi Goldberg do an entire introduction on, I believe it's the second or third Golden Collection, where she goes, listen, these are products of their time. And yeah. she does a very educated, very nice, in saying, like, <laughs> we could cut these, we could bar these, but that doesn't mean they didn't happen. That's one thing that I think Disney really... Holiday pies! Oh, yeah. I love those. What is a holiday pie? It's, it's a, a pie it's that a McDonald's. You... <laughs> yeah, my it's kids like, love. It's like, I like, it's like cake batter inside an apple pie crust. Your dad mm. isn't joking. You really do eat like a 12-year-old, don't you? <laughs> I'm trying to do better, but honestly, it's, it's not <laughs> great. Actually, I kind of want to try it now that you brought it up, too. It's so good. <laughs> they're pretty good. you, you got to get them warm, though. Don't let them cool. Uh, yep. Because yep. once they cool, they're in the bottom. All right. To finish up, back to Disney, I agree. I, I think it's scary about revisionist history. And I think when you start, I think that it needs to be framed. Yeah. In a way of, this is what it was. Because, I mean, at, are, are we... And now I need to go out to... and find a copy of Dumbo before they... Had, before they are, burned are, them all. Are we eventually going to cut out the, uh, the beetle buzzards in um, Jungle Book? Because they do stereotype people for me. I don't know. Nah. <laughs> I'd have to go back and look. It's been a long time. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that's like a no, no, racial it, stereotype. No, no. Well, moving right along, as we, I, there's two things I want to ask, and there may be some couple other things. One, why anim, what would you want to do in animation? And two, mm -hmm. what is the hardest part of your job? Um, well, I want to do costume design for animation. Right. Which is what the equivalent of that is, is visual development mm -hmm. or look development. Mm -hmm. I want to develop the look of characters, not right. necessarily um, the the characters themselves, but, but you know, the clothes they wear. Um, and that's becoming a more, it, it's a very specialized thing, but mm -hmm. it's becoming more prominent. I've, I've done a little bit of research into it. They've been doing costume design, what we would consider costume design since Beauty and the Beast. Uh -huh. Beauty and the Beast was really the start of it. Little Mermaid was kind of kind of part of it, but really if you look at Ariel, her what she wears other than her fin and her seashell bra, um, her circumstances are entirely, you know, what what does the palace have? It's not a, it's not representative of her personality. Whereas with Belle, we really see her evolution from that blue dress to the green to the red to the yellow. Mm -hmm. You know, we see her relationship with the beast evolve with that, and how 
she interacts with people in her little village. Right. Um, that's really where it began. Now, most recently with Moana, um, there was a, there was a uh, visual development artist. I believe her name is Nessa Bove. Mm -hmm. She did costume design for Moana. So she took the character design and added the, the costume elements. Mm -hmm. Well, with computer animation now, costume design is very important. It's so important. And it's, you know, it's... It's very important just in terms of the, um, not even just like the actual look of the costume, but how it looks against the big group of characters. You've seen the, the character sheets, the character lineups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you need to see if some person, if there's a person that has to have a heavier fabric, the detail of the fabric. That's That was one of the specialized things that they did on Brave is they developed a new way to make that tapestry right. of with the, with the mom and the and the daughter and the, the brothers, you know. That's something that's very, very new, but it, it's becoming more and more important. Mm -hmm. Isn't that also, though, and I, I would think, at being Disney, mm -hmm. it's also marketing, I would think. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, my daughter has won as a Disney princess for several Halloweens, mm -hmm. and thinking about, you know, and I know that's not probably what the art that goes into it, but I'm sure somebody's in a business office going, how do we make this a costume? How do we make oh, yeah. this? More so now than ever. Because yeah. I don't know if you've been to the Disney store recently. All the they've, time. <laughs> they've amped up their their costume. They, there's like varying levels of costume you can buy. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. a basic version. There's like a decorative medium version that's still like that like crappy satin, but it has better trim. And then you have the deluxe version, which is the nice fabrics. You know, it, it's, it's a huge marketing tool. <coughs> and with... <clears throat> the Disney Princess is being one of their biggest money makers. They have to make it good mm -hmm. um, to make more money, which is what Disney will always do. Yeah. So, what's the hardest part of your job? Oh gosh, um, as a costume designer, as a costume designer that's only worked in theater, the 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 most difficult part of my job is um, honestly just trying to to and it's not it's the it's the best and the hardest part it's collaborating with so it many often is. so many personalities yeah. you know i've met wonderful people through my work uh wonderful um friends that i've made over the years but trying to get a group of people from all different backgrounds to come together and make one cohesive thing to to create this this art that you know has so many um that, that will have so many elements that have so many things that have to so many personal uh choices that have to be made you know it's 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 wonderful but it's very difficult it's very difficult to do it to do it well and make it make it cohesive for the for the audience yeah i can understand that plus we're talking about creative a-holes <laughs> right uh, and everybody has a vision i would say five. yeah but I, you know, one of the things that I would think about is I would assume you're not only having to be prepared to costume person X, mm -hmm. but under studies and things like that. Oh, yeah, and with films, I mean, with film and television, I mean, who knows how many extras you're going to have? Yeah. How many people you're just going to have that's going to be on screen for two seconds, you know, Marvel film running out from the mm -hmm. burning building. Mm -hmm. You know, you still have to dress those people. They still have to look like they belong in the same universe. Right, mm -hmm. and that's... Uh, uh, I, Recently, I actually talked to somebody who uh, was an extra on Game of Thrones, mm -hmm. and he was talking about the amount of costume. You know, he's he's in it for ten minutes, as it or ten seconds, as it pans through the army. But you know, they had to fit him for all the armor because that's very specific on mm -hmm. sizing. So I I was actually curious about that, thinking about you know what does that mean when you're outfitting literally an army? Yeah, literally, so many people. Um, you know, they they all have to fit in the same world, and they can't they they can't draw attention away from the lead. People. <coughs> you know, they have to be distinguishable, unless they're supposed to not be distinguishable, unless the main character is trying to blend in, trying to disappear in the crowd. You know, so it, it's very difficult. Hmm. All right, on that, anything else? Go I ahead. want to throw out one quick question. So, Lion King has been done as a musical. Mm -hmm. Beauty and the Beast has been done on stage. If you could pick one Disney movie that's not been adapted to the stage yet mm -hmm. and do the costume for it, what would it be? Oh, and do the costumes for it? Yeah. Oh, What man. one needs to be a Broadway show that's not? Well, the Black oh, Cauldron. Cauldron. Took actually, actually, I would love to see, and they're making it, but it's not with Disney, Hercules uh -huh. and mm -hmm. Mulan. 
I think Mulan taken with the original music add a little bit better cultural representation. Mm -hmm. um, well, and even even the animated version, I think it does does have quite a bit. Of Are you saying Donny Osmond doesn't capture the, no. the Asian culture? Well, well is it really no. Donny Osmond? Yes, yeah, Donny Osmond that sings the songs, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, he's Shang Shang's. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've actually, could... I don't think I've ever actually seen the one. What? What? That's my dad's favorite Disney movie. Surprisingly, a lot. really? I'm sure that surprised me. <laughs> I don't even know your dad liked. Uh, I, he was complaining that he had to see some come back to the three dimensional world. world. <laughs> God. Yeah, yeah, I know. I live that life, but yeah. then I get to torture him because I get to make him live that life. Yeah, well, that's good. Anyway, so Mulan. Mulan, yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Well, thank you so much, Katie. We'll have you no back problem. on in a few months, and we'll do a whole episode. Actually, I kind of want to do the history of Walt a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, if you want to do the history of Walt, watch the PBS documentary, The Two-Parter. It. Mm -hmm. it's, very, it's very divisive among Disney fans. There's a lot of people that I know that hate it. But you can't have a person so that's so good at telling stories about people and about being human and not be flawed. Right. Yeah, everyone's flawed. Yeah. In fact, I think they did a fairly good job of not putting yeah, a lot of the anti-Semitic yeah. stuff on him that hasn't really been proven and a few of the other yeah, things. Yeah, there's, there's a there's lot. There's some donations that were made that were proven. Okay, but there's a few, that, but they were much easier. And the whole, you know, what did they not like about it? The dark part of it? Is that what pisses off the Disney fans? It, it, it was part of, part of it was the strike. Yeah. And he was, he, well, and he, I think he just... He was just oblivious. Was, I don't think he was aware. And it was the time of... I'm not trying to defend the guy. I hate, the, actually, that whole the time that we live in. But, mm -hmm. I mean... And the but whole world was, was afraid was of born, Bolsheviks. He was born in, like, 1904, I yeah. believe. So, like... I mean... Old white dude. <laughs> old white dude with money. Old white dude with money. And people... Like, what do you mean they're walking out? I pay him. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think that also gets to, I mean, I think one of the things that Reading comes up a lot is, uh, um, oh, what's the movie about making Mary Poppins with Tom Hanks? Oh, Saving Mr. Banks. Ooh, he should have won an Banks. Oscar for that. He did amazing. I know some people that are aware of that history that was like, yeah, they sugarcoated some of that. Yeah, the well, third act of, of it is really sugarcoated. Um, because they, she did never liked she that never person. liked him. Never liked him. But they were never going to get along. No, no. Yeah. The, you have two. She creative, didn't want to get along with him, so they were never. Not gonna to quote Joe Lewis, but they were both creative a-holes. Yeah, that's what I, I mean. I said. It was their vision. I've said it before. I'm like, oh, now I'm mm. an asshole, and I met another asshole, and that's what happened. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. On that though, thank you so much, Katie. No problem. Good luck. Keep us informed. Keep us, informed, and we'll have you back on in a few months. Okay. Great. Sounds All right. Good. Subscribe on SoundCloud. Oh my God, we're on iHeartRadio. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, and Google Play and iTunes. And, and if you YouTube's, like the pictures, the moving pictures, and YouTube. Th we're on a ton of third party ones. Yeah. That pick yeah. us up. I can't I don't know how many people are listening. It's impossible now to, to track. Anyway, sorry. Not that you care. You gotta push your social media. We That's need a social media director. You you need to apply. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Theater. Yeah, well, <laughs> we need we need it bad. <laughs> Subscribe and share. Bonehead out. Boop boop. Grrrr. <sighs>